Hello everybody and welcome to Innovative Vectorworks BIM. My name is Jonathan Reeves and I'm an architect and professional Vectorworks teacher. I'm going to share with you some of my top 10 favourite Vectorworks 2018 features. I'm going to carry on with my top 10 tips of Vectorworks and this particular tip is about rendering and using OpenGL which is super fast graphics card rendering to enhance your designs. So the great thing is with Vectorworks, if you have a look at the mode bar up here, and I would encourage you to basically click on these very small arrows and tick all of these options until you see all these modes appear, all these buttons. What I'm gonna do is basically change my view to wireframe. So what happens is now when I change view, it's always in wireframe. Equally, if I change that to OpenGL, whenever I change view, and I'm just using the numerical keypad, sorry, should have explained that, to change the view. Let's do it through the menus here. And you can immediately see that I'm basically navigating through, and as soon as I go from top plan, it's unrendered. As soon as I change view to a render view, it will render it up for me. We can also do the same thing with perspective. I quite like modeling in orthogonal views. I know some of you uh, prefer um, perspective, so now, as soon as I change view, we're into perspective mode. So for some people that feels a bit more natural perhaps, and so on. I'm gonna kind of pop that back into orthogonal for now. Okay, great. So the second tip here is, as well as actually enabling the OpenGL, is you'll notice that I've got some quite nice little settings. So let's have a quick look at these. Let's go to OpenGL options. The first tip here is I recommend you put the quality from low up to high. You'll notice that on low quality, um, any curves in the model, maybe this little element here, look quite faceted. That's not too bad, but you know, you'll know you certainly notice it when you model curvy areas, like maybe these partitions. So I would model on at least high. So Vectorworks would take a second to re-render once you choose that option. The second option that I really like is the edges. And without edges, um, everything becomes a bit washed out potentially. And it's very rapid just to turn the edges on. And you get that, uh, that nice sort of edgy look which makes everything far more defined. So that's a definite winner and very, very quick to do. Now you'll also notice that I've enabled shadows and I've turned those on to high quality. But of course there's no shadows in my model at the moment. And the reason for that is I haven't got any lighting. So the first thing I would recommend, if you're gonna add some lighting to a model, is create a separate layer. So I've created a layer up here called Heliodons, um, and this is the Heliodon tool over on the visualization palette that I'm going to use. So if I enable the Heli Heliodons layer, immediately you'll notice that the Heliodon I've already placed, so that's this tool here, and it allows you to choose the date and the time. If you double click, you can actually animate it as well. Let's, let's go ahead, let me just show you where the settings are. Um, so here we go, we've got all the major cities in the world, all the major time zones and cities, cities within the countries of the world, sorry. And you can even put your own longitude and latitude values in if, if you need to. So let's get rid of that Heliodon. So when I go back to my view now, because I've turned shadows on, it will immediately render. Now one quite nice aspect here is, if we select the Heliodon, we can actually use solar animation to scroll through the different dates and times of the year. So this is excellent. You know, I can really show the client why we've specified um, some solar shading or maybe orientated the building in a particular direction. And you can even do sort of internal um, views where you can kind of show the client what it would be like at a certain date and how the sunshine will come into the model. So let me go ahead and turn those other layers on for a second. And we'll just turn the ground first floor and the roof on, and also the site. Okay, so my next tip on taking the enhancement a little bit further, after you've turned up the OpenGL options to high, drawn the edges, maybe think about using the anti-aliasing if you've got a good enough graphics card, that will give it a smoother appearance, and also the shadows and maybe a heliodon. So the next really lovely tip is to use something called ambient occlusion. And some of my earlier videos have shown this. But basically what I can do is I can very rapidly enable the ambient occlusion. And you see get a lovely effect where the shadows look more soft, more realistic, and you get a little bit of light occluded 
from the corners where these edges are so it looks a lot more realistic and the brilliant thing is um, I find that it really you know barely slows down the modeling at all maybe a tiny bit but really looks you know really really quite realistic for OpenGL and bear in mind I'm on a 32 inch screen and I've got two other screens plugged into my poor little laptop here so I'm really kind of working it fairly hard but it's it seems fine from my other video before you did see that I was holding down the B key and doing the x-ray mode and I just wanted to show you that because the graphics are you know really really responsive in Vectorworks these days okay so that's the ambient occlusion and you know there's far more to Vectorworks than that there's a whole bunch of other render styles which basically you can choose but I find when I'm working up to planning stage the OpenGL is all I, all I really go for these days and I barely touch the final quality or the custom render works so I'll try and make some videos on those other options a bit later and um, you certainly get some you know really high quality rendering with those options but you know for, in terms of pure speed OpenGL is pretty unbeatable So in this video, I want to talk about another one of my real top 10 favorite features that Vectorworks offers, and it's basically called Save Views. Now this is a really great feature for setting up some pre-made views. So here I'm showing you a sheet layer with some viewports on, but all of these are saved views. And what I've done is um, I've managed to capture those views of my model so I could show my client around the project. But it's also really nice to be able to show them dynamically. So what I've done is I've set these save views up here. So basically to create a save view, there's various ways to do it, but one way is to cl click save view. And actually I could save a view off the sheet. So basically now, if I go to access number one, you'll see it will immediately go to that rendered view. And what it does, it remembers all the visibilities of all the layers, the classes, it remembers the sun position, the rendering time, um, the render setting, sorry, and everything else. So basically using my walkthrough tool, I can sort of drive through and that's particularly nice. Um, I can also, nice little extra touch, is I can turn on uh, or turn off the enabled palettes for a second. So this is really cool, I can go full screen, just let it finish processing, here we go. And that gives you a really nice sort of impression of the view as I'm scrolling through. And if the client says they'd like to look in a certain area, they, they can sort of ask you to steer through. So let me skip through to some of the save views. And the great thing is if you pre-record them, um, you know, you can't really go wrong when, <laughs> when you're actually under pressure and you're trying to drive around the model. So here we go. Um, you can see we can get inside the project and we can kind of walk through to some extent and pan around. But actually, I'm just going to keep going with my save views and skim through to the living room. Okay, so I'm going to pop out of full screen mode for a second and get my palettes back because it is quite nice to show you a few other features here. So over on this particular tab of the navigation palette, you'll see that I have the save views also accessible and all I need to do is double click those in order to access them. Now the really great thing here is if I decide, hmm, I want to just adjust this view a tiny bit, then basically what I can do is right click and I can redefine the dining room view. So that basically re-records all of the aspects that I'm asking it to here that I can tick. Let's click OK. And if I double click, you'll see it now when I go to that dining room view, it rewinds to the previous view that I just re-recorded. So that's a very nice feature. But what it does mean is it's very rapid for you to set up kind of like a, a pre-recorded animation almost or presentation for your client. So it also reminds you when you're under the pressure of the, uh, you know, the presentation to the client, you know, what things it was you wanted to actually discuss with them um, and what questions you wanted to ask. So that's really, really cool. You can see we've got a bit of an issue here. <laughs> I can highlight to the client. Okay, so I hope you've enjoyed that feature, the save views. So what I would encourage you to do is have a look at using the save views function here. I can go back to my sheet layer, actually. There we go or use the navigation palette over here to set the save views up. I'll just make one other point. Save views aren't just for 3D presentation. They are seriously useful when you're actually working on different aspects of the design. So let's say you were focusing on working on, uh, I don't know, maybe the stair or maybe this en suite. What you can actually do is just save a view for that. 
So you've got a view there for the whole suite, en suite. Let's go to the utility. And basically what you can do is use the save views to speed up your design process because it easily zooms in for you and allows you to work on those key areas. So yeah, I hope you've enjoyed that video. Basically, save views are one of the lovely features of Vectorworks. And I find that, you know, people just don't always use them. And there is a bit more we can do. We can actually set up animations to animate between them, but I'm not going to go into that today. But I do encourage you, please have a go with the save view functions. They're very, very nice. Thanks for listening.